Okay, here we are in lesson six. Uh, we're going to cover a whole bunch of uh, topics in uh, just a few minutes here. So uh, get your thinking cap on. Uh, first, you need to go to the class uh, website and download the new software, uh, being sure to save uh, any old commands that you implemented. Um, first topic that we're going to uh, talk about are faces. And uh, face, of course, is uh, the most important aspect of a character. And if you look at the uh, face, uh, uh, we don't really have a lot of detail, but the uh, human psyche immediately uh, recognizes it as a face and even ascribes uh, emotions to it. So um, as an example, we implemented a uh, application that uses uh, ellipses and lines and uh, rectangles to uh, create uh, faces based on parameters uh, ranging from 0 to 1. So for example, uh, um, uh, 0 might uh, represent a very small nose and 1 might represent a very large nose. Um, Another other parameters are the eye width and the pupil width, uh, the the uh, mouth width, uh, the hair length, uh, various things of that nature, and uh, then we can uh, use the uh, play program, which uh, generates frame numbers, uh, feed the frame numbers into a face command and uh, it will in essence uh, display almost uh, an infinite number of uh, faces. I'd like you to uh, check out the uh, listed website which has a more artistic uh, viewpoint uh, in terms of drawing faces and then you might try to modify face.txt or demo faces.txt to uh, uh, be able to create your own uh, faces of uh, different kinds. The next topic is uh, textured fonts. The uh, stroke fonts that uh, were the only thing available uh, previously were actually sort of ugly. They're just straight lines. Uh, they don't have any nice uh, curves. The uh, textured fonts are files ending with .txf and basically we've added a new command .printtex uh, that's comparable to the uh, print command, but it uses uh, a selection of textured fonts like Times Roman uh, instead of the uh, stroke font. Uh, a texture is basically an image. Uh, the uh, uh, image option for rectangles and triangles and ellipses uh, actually is implemented by uh, using the OpenGL texture feature. And in OpenGL, a texture or an image uh, has coordinates that can be associated with the vertex vertices of a figure, and then that causes the texture to be laid on top of the figure, whatever it is, in, in some very flexible ways that can be specified by the programmer. Um, we have uh, uh, a demo text program and you can type dot art demo text or dot play demo text to uh, see some of the uh, effects that you can get with textured fonts which are quite nice. The four colors in the uh, print text command represent the colors in the four color corners of a letter so if they're all the same you get uh, red, blue, or green. If they're different, then you actually get a linear gradient fill from uh, one color to another. A uh, gradient fill is a smooth blending from one color to another. Uh, it can be applied to a single letter or it can actually be computed across uh, multiple objects uh, as uh, in the following uh, example. Okay, we're ready for uh, game number one, uh, which I call uh, Capture the Comet, although it's sort of a poor man's comet. 
Uh, we take the rectangle program that we had previously, uh, that move in 3D, uh, we add a perspective view, and instead of having a move in the uh, Cartesian plane, we have a moving in three dimensions. And remember that in the perspective view, if something gets further away, it goes to the vanishing point. So that, that makes it difficult to uh, figure out where it actually is if it's uh, moving in three dimensions. Uh, when you click the mouse, it uh, is mapped to um, the um, zero plane, uh, and if it matches where the object actually is in three dimensions, then you score points. All the previous applications that um, you looked at, all the commands, uh, were basically stateless. Um, they either took the um, frame number and uh, did something uh, uh, modulo 10 so they went 0 through 9, 0 through 9, 0 through 9 or they used random numbers uh, but they really uh, didn't uh, have any ability to remember values uh, from one execution of the command to another. Uh, for games that's not going to work. Uh, so we have two new M library methods. One is called get global state and the other one is called set global state. Games also have user interactions, so we have a new option on the play command, the dash M option, which stands for mouse. And when the mouse is clicked, the uh, play command uh, will be uh, executed with uh, the frame number as before, so it's uh, backwards compatible. But in addition to the frame number, there'll be a button number. Uh, whether the mouse was clicked up or down and the XY uh, coordinate of the mouse click and the way the hardware works is you only get the mouse click in raster or pixel coordinates not in the coordinates used in the graphic. Every game is going to have a state diagram which uh, indicates uh, what happens as the game moves from one stage to another. Uh, this one is very simple. In frame zero, the state is initialized. Uh, after that, if the mouse is clicked, the state is updated. And if the mouse is not clicked, then the uh, game is redrawn based on the current state. Game state is recorded in a property list, uh, which is an array of name-value pairs. Uh, for this particular game, uh, the state is pretty simple. We have the time at which the mouse is clicked, the uh, X and Y uh, coordinate uh, that has uh, been translated to uh, the graphical coordinate system from the raster coordinate system, and then we have the uh, total number of points. This is a uh, Halloween lesson, uh, after all. Uh, try dot play uh, dash m uh, game one. Uh, study game one dot text very carefully. Uh, remember, you can uh, modify the rectangles to be ellipses or lines or whatever you want. Uh, you can cause the uh, actions to be different. You can add new state, uh, experiment, and above all, have fun.